Hi, again, everyone, technical problem. I'm Theo Fanis. I will be your next session host. Uh, and I hope that you have enjoyed your uh, your lunch, your breakfast, your uh, brunch, call it uh, whatever you like. Um, our next uh, speaker uh, will be uh, Peter uh, Vidos and uh, with a great presentation about uh, animated data stories and uh, Jupyter. I will uh, bring him uh, on stage. Hi, Peter. Hey, everyone. Hi, Theophanes. Great to be here. Thank you. How are you? Me. Where are you calling us from? Well, I'm, I'm, everything's great. I'm calling in from Budapest, Hungary. And you? Okay. I'm uh, calling you from uh, Tenerife, Spain. Ah, nice. <laughs> so I guess you I... have a bit of better weather than we do. Right yeah, here. I guess we have a big difference. <laughs> I yeah. would bring up uh, your slides. Mm -hmm. So and I'm and, good to go, right? Okay, I will uh, leave you, and uh, you can start. Okay, thank you very much. So, hey everyone, thanks very much for having me. I'm uh, from a small app called Visu. Uh, uh, underscore PyJMS with specifically this uh, this workshop or this talk and and you will have all the materials that I'm going to use uh, during my talk um, you feel free to you know clone it and and play with the examples that are there there are a couple of useful links down here uh, but basically if you go to and this is read me file but if you go to notes folder um, then, uh, so the examples that I'm going to just show you. So, about uh, about what we do, um, we created a new type of data visualization tool. Uh, new type in the sense that it uses a single logic to generate all different types of charts, and uh, ah, because so of we, this, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. you have, I think you have a small connection issue. Maybe you could uh, yes, disable definitely. the camera in order to have a better uh, connectivity because uh, there are a little bit of... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it better now? I hope it is. I mean, Theo will let me know if, if not. Yes, yes. So, thank you. Okay, cool, cool. Perfect. So yeah, where was I? Uh, so we created this uh, this charting engine that uses a single rule set to build all different types of charts. And because of this uh, special uh, characteristic of it, it can also animate between the charts that are expressed on its interface, as you can see in this animation uh, that, that is now on screen. And uh, technology-wise, uh, we built the whole end. The, so the core engine is in, in C++. Uh, let me a little bigger for you. So the core engine is in C++. So we built stories and interactives with it back in uh, 2020 and 2021. And then uh, we released an open source JavaScript library on the core of it uh, using WebAssembly in uh, September 21. And uh, we turned our attention to data scientists and the Jupyter uh, ecosystem that brought me here uh, this March when we released the first tool called IPyVisu, which I'm going to introduce you in a little bit more detail in a couple of minutes. It already enabled people to build animated uh, charts and data stories in notebooks using Python. And then this July, when I was presenting uh, at EuroPython, we released a new extension called IPyVisu Story, which already enables the users to build, present, and share animated interactive presentations uh, within um, within Jupyter and similar computational notebooks. Uh, Platform-wise, um, the our tools are already available in uh, many uh, notebook uh, platforms, but also in in things like uh, Streamlit and Mode, or you can use it within PyScript or Panel as well. Um, so, just very basically, I mean, before we go to the logic, since uh, I only have uh, such a short amount of time, I thought I would show you how uh, this thing works when like it's it's in, in its full fledged uh, functionality. So I created a, this, uh, and and I also thought it would help you get uh, 
your attention. Uh, let's get to you a little bit closer for with your pajamas. So I, I, I thought I would talk about Donald Trump, uh, or more specifically, his tweets. So uh, Trump started tweeting, and, and this is just an example of a data story, obviously, built with, with our tool. Uh, so we started tweeting back in 2009, in May, and uh, these are uh, the monthly number of tweets in the first two years. It's like, uh, yeah, the top is yeah, 36 per month, so roughly one per day. And then in the, in the years later, uh, he hooked on quite well. Uh, so it was like the, the top is, I think it's above, uh, yeah, 1100 in uh, January 2015. And then he became a uh, serious nominee for the presidency. Uh, and, uh, and then you can notice this downward trend in a number of his tweets. And uh, yeah, and then he became president and, and there's an interesting like upward trend in the number of tweets uh, again. Uh, so this is all his tweets, and uh, we can also see uh, the number of retweets, uh, like how many times his tweets were retweeted. And as you can see, it shows a completely different picture. So this is just one example. There are actually, like as you can see here in the bottom left corner, there are 11 more slides of this story. You can find it, as I said, in the repo folder that I shared with you. It works so Here, um, it's the example with the use of our tool within a Jupyter notebook because, yeah, just to make sure that you get it, Jupyter notebook that I just uh, used inside it. Okay, so uh, we were, uh, I was just, then let's get to like how the whole thing is working, uh, the inner logic and, and see a couple of examples, uh, simple ones and then more complex ones, uh, right up to uh, the story uh, of Donald Trump or a similar one. So Wizzy uses a very simple logic, a very simple basic logic, uh, where we have one method called the animate method, uh, via which you can describe a chart. Uh, you can add the data, the configuration of the chart and the styling. And when you call the animate method once, you'll end up with a static chart. And when you call the animate method twice, then the original chart will just morph to the second state. And that's that. Obviously, it's, it's very simple and elegant. But uh, as you can imagine, the, the complexity starts when we, we try uh, to make things uh, like work perfectly well. So just to give you a simple example, here uh, we use pandas, by the way. And from the IPyVisu package, we will use chart, data, config, and style, which I'm sure you understand what to uh, relate to. And we just read the CSV file and, and add it to uh, the data frame and add it to the data object uh, used by IPyVisu. We should be seeing uh, the, the data frame. Yeah, and it's the Titanic data frame or the Titanic data that I'm pretty sure all of you are familiar with. We just added a count column uh, that uh, has the value of one for each passenger. And uh, the first chart we're going to build, first we just uh, set the width and the height, and then uh, we add the data that we, uh, like we call the data add data frame method here. So we added the data frame to the data object, and then we call the animate method by adding the data to the chart. And we set the configuration in a way that the count, so the number of uh, passengers on the x-axis, their sex is on the y-axis, and we also add the count to the label channel and add a title to the chart. And uh, what we end up with uh, when we when we run this cell is a simple bar chart. So you know the count is on the x-axis, the uh, elements are split by sex, and uh, the label, so the number, the count here is also repeated on the uh, on the label axis, so the labels on the markers. Uh, a little bit about the data here. So IPyVisu can only uh, this, so have two types of data, categorical and numerical. So categories and values. Uh, obviously, count is a value here, and sex is a category. And um, and that's about it. And because we added a category to the y-axis, uh, IPVs will automatically know that it means that it needs to split the data to by uh, the sex category. And it also uh, has this built-in uh, sum capabilities. So here, here, it automatically summed up the values in the count column uh, based on the splitting of the, uh, the markers uh, and, and counted that uh, we have three, 314 
female passengers and 577 male passengers. Uh, so the next, uh, in the next phase, when I call the animate method once again, I'm just going to add the survived uh, category to the x-axis, so to the same axis where the count is on, and add it also to the color. And uh, then if I run this cell, what we end up with is a, is a stacked uh, bar chart where the, color, the, the bars are, are splitted based on uh, whether people died or survived um, uh, after the crash. And uh, in the third and final example phase, I'm just going to add the survived uh, category. So whether some of the survivors have died uh, to the y-axis, uh, which would result in these elements grouping across the y-axis. It's fairly simple. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the most important part uh, to understand is the config part. Uh, styling is, it has its logic, but, but it, you know, it, it's just uh, changes how the charts uh, look and feel, but uh, how you set up the charts is, is the crucially important part of, of IPyVizu. Calling the animate method over and over again is, is like, it's, it's very simple as, as I'm pretty sure you've realized. So just a quick intro to that. We have access like X and Y, and we have channels, uh, color, label, uh, size, and lightness. Uh, here we used uh, color. So to, to uh, add, uh, so to color the uh, the markers on the chart differently based on uh, whether they survived, people have survived or not, and we had we used the label channel here uh, so that uh, uh, the the number uh, the count is written on the markers, and and as you could see uh, here in this phase, uh, we automatically move the label to the center of the markers uh, because that's how you should do it with a stack chart. But uh, but put it on on next to the markers when when it's uh, when when we have some space for it. So we really try to uh, like uh, play nicely and and uh, and and follow the generic data visualization rules in order to help you make uh, nice and looking charts out of box. So yeah, so we have the the these channels and. And uh, all the X's and the channels can have any number of categorical series. Right, right now, there's the sex and the survive on the y-axis, and one uh, numerical series on them. It's easy as that. Other parameters uh, that you can add to the configuration is the coordinate system, whether it's a Cartesian or polar. It's Cartesian by default. Um, whether uh, the geometry, uh, which uh, describes what kind of geometric elements we use. Right now, it's a rectangle by default. but if I add here, uh, let's say geometry um, circle and rerun the cell, then um, yeah, as you can see, uh, the the markers change to a circle. Usually, when we use a chart like this, it makes a lot of sense to add uh, the same number that's on the y-axis to the size of the markers, which means that you know the size of these circles will represent a difference uh, between the values that are also shown on the x-axis. So there are a couple of parameters like this. I strongly encourage you to go through all the examples that are in the repo folder, and and uh, and we have a uh, some documentation. So I'm, I'm not going to go into more detail right now to uh, be mindful of uh, everybody's time here. So um, let's see a more complex example. Um, it, uh, it shows the results of a, a, a survey that we did in, uh, in five LinkedIn groups where we asked people, these are groups uh, where data scientists uh, are present and data analysts, uh, how often they have to uh, present uh, the results of their analysis to non-data scientists. Uh, presumably business stakeholders. And we have uh, the number of votes uh, per each option, per each group. And we build this little story, something to, to show the data from different angles. And again, uh, we're using the pandas data frame and we just read the CSV file, add it to the data object, uh, which we then add to the chart. And uh, we use one thing that we haven't seen before, which is the data component uh, within the, uh, the animate method. And uh, we right away filter uh, the data by just uh, you know leaving the data for two that uh, relates to one group out of the five that's in the data. Um, the reason to do it is uh, to just try and introduce the chart that we built here. And in the next phase, I'm just going to turn off the filtering and then we can see all the data. It's actually a really nice way uh, to introduce a data set to an audience uh, to just show one set of it and then to zoom out and, and show, show everything. Uh, let me just really quickly run this chart so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is a stacked uh, 
bar chart again, which shows that in this group, 56% voted on, uh, let, said that they uh, they do the presentation twice or more per month, 12% uh, one, once per month, 17% uh, once or twice per quarter, and 15% never. And what I do here is I add, again, the vote percentage to the x-axis, then I split it up by answer, which is also added to the color scale so that you know the split-in markers are having a different color. I add the vote percentage to the label axis, and, uh, and I added the group to the y-axis, but I filtered it down so that it only includes one group. And then I have only, uh, I added a title. I, I fiddle with the styling a little bit around here so that you have uh, an understanding, like here, the I set the padding, the right padding of the legend uh, somehow, but uh, there, there are plenty of other options. And uh, in, when in the next phase, I switch the filtering off, the uh, only thing that uh, happens is that all the data for the remaining four groups appear. Obviously, it's really, really easy to follow uh, what's going on here. And I think that's uh, an important uh, benefit of, of IPyVisu and IPyVisu story that when you are showing uh, different views of the same data set, since they are connected uh, with the use of animation, it's really easy for the audience to understand what's going on and they don't have to like make this kind of abstraction in their head anymore that they now do with static charts. So here's a nifty feature that I'm just going to switch on, which is called splitting. So I just set the split to true. And as you can see, the stack chart uh, becomes uh, like four separate uh, charts where you could uh, just compare the components really easily uh, right next to each other. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I also going to change now. Here until now, we had the vote percentage on the label and on the x-axis. And now I'm going to change it to have an add the vote count. So how many votes we received from each group. Again, it's it's like it's the similar to what we did with Trump between the tweets and the tweet values. So when you're changing a continuous value, uh, it it looks really nicely, and again, it's really easy to to follow along for the audience. And uh, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm I'm rearranging the chart a little bit. Uh, take a look at the code, and you'll understand what's going on. Summing up, so I'm having now all the number of votes per each option independently from the groups, and then I'll just add yet another value, which is the um, the percentage in total uh, that any that all the options received. And I'm just going to switch the coordinate system to polar. And uh, I'm not sure how many of you would guess what. Uh, how stack bar chart looks in the polar coordinates. It's either, uh, yeah, by the way, it's either a donut chart, uh, it's either a donut chart or uh, or a pie chart. Yeah, it's like that. Now there were two issues. This was the original syntax that we used when we released our first tool, and uh, people, so data scientists, we talked about it. Said that this generic logic is really hard to comprehend. Uh, people not necessarily know that in order to make a pie chart, they have to make a stack bar chart and then put it into polar coordinates. And the one-directional use is is a little bit puzzling. So if I go back and rerun, let's say this cell, then I would end up with with something very different than than what I was expecting uh, because of the polar coordinates staying switched on and because Wizu keeps uh, remembering all the options uh, from the previous states. Uh, so these were two challenges that we were faced with. And uh, the way we, we address these issues is uh, first we created presets. So yeah, I'm, I'm just moving forward uh, through, by the way, some tabs of mine. So we added uh, IPyVisu presets. We added these uh, well-known chart types ranging from uh, simple column chart to waterfall chart or, or, uh, or bubble plot or a percentage area chart or stream draft, whatever. And uh, you can find it in the documentation. And when you click on any of these thumbnails, you will end up with a code. And here is the important part so that it's not only config anymore, but config.stream. Uh, explain that this is going to be a stream graph. And uh, now it has only lo a lot less options to add. So you can just, you have to just add what's in the X and the Y axis and uh, what, what the uh, numbers are stacked by, and then just add a title. And IPyVisu will automatically know that you are about to build a stream graph and set everything else according to this uh, uh, that you, that you, selected uh, and by, by, by using it. So again, a simple example. This time the data set is about uh, uh, how much revenue different music formats generated in the US through, uh, between 1973 and 2020. Uh, as you can see, we uh, changed the year to use it as a string. 
because as I said, Hypervisu only differentiates between strings and or like categories and values. And we wanted to understand that year is a category. Uh, and it's also important to note that we ordered uh, or sorted the data frame from oldest to uh, to, to newest. And that's something you should do uh, when you're using IPyVisu because since it's not aware of any temporal data, only categories, uh, it won't know what to do with, with the temporal data if it's not ordered uh, from oldest to newest. So right as now I'm using the bar chart configuration setting and I'm just adding X and Y uh, and, and a title. Uh, but I can also, next up, I'm going to use the group bar configuration and add the format uh, to Y and, and also the group by, which means that every bar will have a different color. It's actually a lot nicer, especially when, you know, we build a story and we want the audience to be able to distinguish between, you know, what's shown on the chart and the different categories. And this is just, again, one example of using the styling. I'm just adding uh, on the plot, the markers should use this color palette. And I'm adding a list of colors uh, to it. And, and then from this point on, IPyVisu will use this color palette throughout the story, unless I change it once again and override it. So um, yeah, this is actually a step that's unnecessary from at this point, because we already further developed the engine. But I actually just added the year uh, to the x-axis to split the markers up. And uh, so I'm just going to build a split it column chart uh, from this data, uh, which looks somehow like this. Uh, so you can, you know, we can see the we can see the trends here. It's actually not very nice that uh, we can see the labels. It's uh, it, it it yeah, it should be removed there. So I'm just going to rerun the chart and it should have been disappearing. It doesn't. Whatever. Mm. And and uh, here's another problem with it that we have the simple uh, events uh, to remove those and uh, when i'm going to run the next slide you'll see it and so i'm just going to turn this uh, it looks like I, I ran into an error because of this uh, let me oops let me really quickly fix this up mm, yeah let's restart and run all and then we can see uh, the chart as it looks as it's looking like uh, just a second mm, but uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you understand uh, what's going on here at least or at least I have a strong hope you do mm. yeah so here's the data here's the original bar ch column chart the group column chart uh, the split it column chart uh, then, as you can see, we have only every fifth year. Uh, we split it the stream graph. We zoomed in. We zoomed back out, and uh, and and we change it to a line chart. So again, fairly easy. And here I'm using the line. Here I'm using the data filters, uh, just switching it off, and you know, filtering on certain categories and, and things like that that you already saw. Okay. And the fourth uh, version is is what we released because it's still a one directional use case. It's called the iPad is a story. It adds new elements such as a story, a slide, and a step. And because I'm going to run out of time, I'm, I'm going to like really be very vague in, in describing what we're seeing here. But basically, uh, we, we create slides. Uh, so this is like slide number one. It includes only one step. And it has a chart that's it's the same syntax as you've seen before. So it has a data, it's filtered, it has a stacked area charts configuration, and that's it. And we add it to the story. That's it. We had we had another slide where the configuration is in a way changed that we uh, switch on the splitting feature, and then we add it to the story as well. Uh, we also use the tooltip feature that you already saw. If I hover my mouse over a marker, uh, the the data behind it uh, shows up, and we play the story. So if if I run this cell, uh, we'll end up with uh, a presentation that has two slides. I can even put it to full screen. It has a stacked area chart of the values out there. And uh, in the next phase, I'm just going to split it up. And that's it. So it's it's really like you can uh, you can go back and forth between the slides that you set for yourself. Uh, as you can see, I mean, I'm just adding again the event that removes every uh, year that's not divisible by fifths because it doesn't look really nice on the x-axis. And then I'm just going to add another slide, slide number three, uh, which has actually two steps. So I'm creating the slide object and I'm adding steps 
one, two, and uh, and I'm playing the story once again. And so what I'm going to end up with is uh, is a story of three slides. Uh, I only have every fifth year written on the screen, and uh, we saw this part, and then we split the sp switch the splitting feature off and remove the filtering, and you can see how much money the federal, uh, the U.S. spent on on uh, yeah on defense. So again, I strongly encourage you to go to this uh, workshop repo. As I said, you can uh, get to it by uh, bit.ly slash ipavizu underscore pygemis, uh, or just if you go to vizuhq slash vizu workshops. And, uh, and I, I also encourage you to, like ne next week, there'll be PyData Global, another great conference. And we're running a workshop, a nine min, 90 minute intro workshop, where obviously we can get into much more details, but also we uh, run a sprint. So if you want to contribute to our project, which would be absolutely awesome, um, then then we would love to welcome you. It's on the 1st and the 2nd of December next week. You can find all the details at the PyData Global website, uh, but everything is here in the repo folder. So well, that's, that's all I wanted to share with you for now. And um, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if, uh, if, if you have some. That was a great presentation, Peter. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Theo. Thanks. I, I think it's a little bit unfair because I have seen, I think, uh, your presentation in uh, Dublin. And uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, take advantage of my privilege as a session host. And I wanted to ask you about um, <laughs> if you can give us a brief uh, update, because I have seen also the presentation for uh, stream, uh, Streamlit. And uh, mm -hmm. maybe you can um, describe us a, with a few words about uh, what is being done in the background, like uh, the services you are using for, uh, um, for IP, uh, Visu, IP Visu. Mm, so, but uh, sorry, I, I just didn't get the reference to Streamlit, uh, what that was about. Because I have seen to the presentation that, uh, that maybe it's, already... it's my, 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 my misunderstanding, okay. Oh, that is, I, that, I so, that, uh, I, so that IPiviso is already working within Streamlit, that's what you mean, right? Yeah. Is that? Okay. So, oh yeah. Um, yeah, let me quickly bring it up. Um, because it does. So yeah, in the background, well, we are working uh, heavily on on making the the onboarding experience as 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 great as possible, and also to integrate our tool into other tools that data scientists are using. Because it seems that that the data scientist community is really like uh, like like what we do, and we want uh, to you know to to uh, have more people uh using our stuff and and help us understand what we built uh we are also researching heavily uh like the grammar of animation because this is uh quite new in the sense that uh make the form of charts it's not people don't really know uh how to use it and uh, we, we we are working on that too and and also we are obviously doing a lot of things performance wise and building exactly Examples for people to achieve this. Sorry, I, I would just say if we can stop sharing stop. because you are you, hiding, it's, you have a connection problem. So far, it's again the results of a of a LinkedIn survey. Yeah, it should have been better to show it, but. Uh, if you if you look for IPyVision and Streamlit or search for it, uh, there there are a couple of examples already that that uh, feel free to check out. Uh, we are actually working together with the Streamlit team uh, to to make the experience for the users uh, even better. Yes, and I uh, what I have seen is like uh, the tool is very simple to use, and uh, you're using. Uh, I, I don't know for me because I'm not uh, related to this. Uh, I don't have this occupation. I'm software engineer. It was very, very easy to understand what is being happened and everything. I have just removed the presentation. Maybe um, uh, you would have a better connection. Now. I have to admit uh, here what you just said because uh, it was breaking up a little bit, but yeah. uh, parts of it I understood. <laughs> And, I just uh, said that yeah, um, I'm, I'm... Uh, it was easy for me to understand. Even I don't have the topic of uh, data scientist or data engineering or mm -hmm. analyst. Uh, it was very easy for me to understand it. 
uh, the glad to hear glad to hear Theo thank you very much and uh, yeah it's it's really like uh, if you I don't know if you had the chance to to paste the link to this repo folder to the YouTube chat or I can do it I guess maybe I have tried three times but now we have done it with the <laughs> official pajama account <laughs> thank you I really appreciate that and uh, yeah thanks again for having me and uh, and all the best for for all the other uh, speakers and the attendees it was great being here Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, and uh, I hope you will enjoy the rest of uh, the conference. I will stay tuned for sure. Yeah, I will just now uh, remove you from the stream. Sorry for that. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs>